Thank you so much, Karen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Thursday. Hopefully the weather doesn't get too bad on us today. I want to thank Rod Kirk for being here. Rod, if you guys don't know, is the Economic Development Director for the city of Hendersonville. It's a great city by the lake. Rod, thanks for taking the time out of your day to be on the call. Uh, thanks for having me again to the chamber and you and Aaron and Kathleen. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. So tell us a little about what's new in the city of Hendersonville. What well, can we look forward to? I think it's sort of a rinse and repeat. We, Our commercial activity is just continues to be incredible, um, you know, to the point where planning and codes are just doing all they can to keep up with, with uh, what they do on their end. So commercially still moving forward, filling spaces. I take no credit for that. We don't really focus a lot on retail uh, in my role, just because we don't need to. It's coming to Hendersonville. We have the market, we have the demographics, we have the space. So retail and commercials coming here um, without any real recruitment type efforts. So very strong, um, lots of places opening um, in the near future and a lot of things in the pipeline. So just um, busy, busy for the planning and codes department. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a couple of new restaurants coming to the area. Do you want to tell us kind of what some new restaurants? I know we all like food around here. Yeah, so in terms of fast food, um, it looks like Popeye's is moving forward. I think that's right on the site next to uh, Lowe's on Main Street. Um, and then I think something that people are excited about, not that they aren't a Popeye's, but Sea Salt is moving from downtown Nashville onto Indian Lake Boulevard. Um, that received a lot of great reviews when it was in Nashville. Uh, they felt like with everything that's happening in downtown um, with the, the Second Avenue bomb and, and things like that, that they could make a run of it in, um, in a suburban area and they selected Hendersonville to do that. So uh, very excited about that. Heard a lot of great things about it when it was in Nashville and hopefully it'll do well here. Absolutely, where is that going? Do you know the exact location? It's, um, it's going where the old uh, Hana I think is. Okay. Um, I'll have to verify that, but it's right on Indian Lake in one of the strips. Okay, center. at Fuji's I think maybe. At Fuji's, yeah. Yes, so. perfect. Well, that's a great location, easy to get to, and I know everybody's excited to have. Yeah, there's signs up. signs up. It's very visible from the road, so. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's interesting for you to say that it's coming from the Nashville area to Hendersonville. We're seeing more of that, um, kind of us being a little bit of a test market. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so, you know, it's been interesting to watch. We've, um, we've had a couple of different prototypes here. Uh, that used us as a test market. Um, one that comes to mind is Pop Shelf. And I think there, there's two others and I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, Kelly, so maybe you can help me. Um, but these are, are places that are new to the market and they are being rolled out in several test markets, uh, but on a smaller scale. And um, then based on, on that uh, success, then they'll open up more around the country. So I'm not I'm not sure why Hendersonville, and I, I need to find this, why we're being selected for those types of things, but, um, but it's a good thing. And I think we might be able to parlay that into sort of a, you know, we're, we're the prototype city for these types of ideas. Absolutely. And I know one of them we had talked about before was Lowe's. Lowe's is doing yeah. a reset um, where they're kind of doing what they call an urban Lowe's. So they will kind of mimic a tractor supply as well as the current Lowe's um, footprint that they have now. And so they will have, um, dog food, horse feed, all kinds of stuff there. So that's really interesting that they're testing that um, prototype here in Hendersonville, which is a huge honor. I know another one that we were talking about was McDonald's. McDonald's on Indian Lake is gonna be doing a little bit of a, a change on their format. Um, and they're using Hendersonville as a test market for that as well. So kudos to you and your team and the city um, and the mayor for bringing things like that to the city because we, we love to be the test market for those. We've had great success with those. I personally love Pop Shelf. I think it's a great addition to um, our city and uh, great people. Yeah, it's been interesting to watch that. And I think it's, it's um, again, if we can position our city as that, it could be a differentiator for us. And you know, you're always looking at ways that you can you know, set your city aside from, from your sister cities around the region. Absolutely. Um, an article came out the other day um, with the 2020 business climate rankings uh, for site development. Where did we rank? Do you know? 
So Tennessee ranked 10th, um, and this came from Site Selection Magazine, which is a highly respected uh, magazine in the economic development world. Um, and y'all who have heard me speak before may have heard me mention site selectors. Uh, that's typically who we work with when we're working projects. Companies hire these site selectors to do a regional or a national or even an international search for their next location. So this magazine is, is made up of those site selectors and uh, they, they ranked all the states in terms of um, numerous categories for economic development and Tennessee ranked 10th this year um, in that publication. So that's, that's big for the state and of course for, for the region and for us as well, because we can now use that as part of our pitch that you know, Tennessee is highly ranked in, in states and competitiveness for economic development projects. Where have we ranked in the previous years? You know, since I've been in this business in uh, 2006, Tennessee's always ranked fairly high. We've been, and there's numerous publications, so it depends on which, which publication you're looking at, but we've always ranked fairly high, sometimes even in the top three, top five. So in terms of, of business climate, um, primarily long-term business climate, uh, Tennessee is very competitive and always ranks well in those types of um, listings. Yeah. We've talked before um, on a previous call about multi-purpose development. Can you kind of go into what that is and how it's good for the economy here? So like a mixed use? Yes. Yeah, so um, let's, let's use the, the information that just came out in the Tennessee and about the development that's going up in Glenbrook um, that's been in, on the books for a couple years. Um, that is a mixed use development that's going on the, the lot right next to Steinmart. Um, and so it can be a mixed bag for people. There's people that don't, we don't need more retail stores because we've got a lot open, understandable. That is, there's a lot of truth to that. Don't need more residents. Um, so so I, I understand that and, and everyone has their opinion on that. However, um, when you look at that type of development and what it can do for that location, even if it's adding some retail space in the development, you're going to have hundreds of new shoppers right next to Glenbrook. So those empty spaces, you can now use that information to say, we're bringing in more market share for you. We're bringing in um, 300 residents into this community. So while I understand that there's... Um, can be a little bit of a, a rub there with new space versus empty space, that traffic and that population will only help fill those spaces. So at the end of the day for the retailers and really for the city who don't want empty spaces, that kind of mixed use development that brings in those types of residents is a good thing. Absolutely. When I hear you say all that, I think we need another Chick-fil-A. That's what I hear <laughs> when you say all that. Well, that's going to be a really congested area if we're <laughs> yes that is gonna that line will uh now go out to <laughs> vietnam who, knows? Vet. who knows where that'll go a new exit ramp off of vietnam vets just for chick-fil-a <laughs> chick-fil-a exit seven right exactly um so with covid this past year kind of slowing things down how has it affected the pipeline of projects um interestingly enough it's it has slowed it down really from March of last year um, through the end of, of 2020. Uh, things, you know, like everyone, people are waiting to see what happened. Companies typically are trying to mitigate risks when they're expanding or moving. Um, so those kinds of decisions weren't being made on a large scale because of those risks involved. Um, since the first of the year and really specifically February on, I have seen more activity in the pipeline than I have in my economic development career. It's been amazing. Um, February was a record month for the number of projects that ECD um, touched. Uh, so it's pretty amazing that, you know, we, we've seen this before um, in the Great Recession where this pent up demand and you know, everybody's holding on and waiting until, you know, the, the things kind of settle down and people can see where where we're going in the, in the near and, and medium future. And then it kind of busts wide open. And I think that's where we're at right now with COVID in the project pipeline. Um, now what I'm seeing, it doesn't necessarily 
um, help Hendersonville is 90% of those projects are in the manufacturing space. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as we've talked about before, um, in terms of space, acreage, and existing buildings and workforce, the manufacturing piece is just not necessarily our best uh, sector to, to go after. So um, tons of projects in the pipeline. Um, and even, you know, that leaves 10% for corporate and office and those types of projects. So we've got our name in two projects right now that are office related. Um, so the pipeline's great. It's really busting wide open. Wonderful. And I think there is some great still space available for those um, corporations that want to come in um, that maybe not aren't the manufacturers that we're kind of looking for. Um, I know there are some developments that are being worked on right now projects. We have Camel Car Wash coming to this side of Hendersonville um, between the Speedway and the um, new gas station. We have, of course, you mentioned Popeyes, um, Optimum Men's Health um, coming to Maple Row. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's going to be a good addition to the city. And of course, we have our Vanderbilt, uh, which was the project spotlight um, in your newsletter in the city's newsletter last month. Um, and they are set to open, I believe, here in the next couple of weeks or months. Uh, we, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, we've got some great things happening uh, on this side of town as well as um, that side of town. As far as new coming in, we've got... Um, and Ellis Pain Management coming over by the hospital. Henderson Family Dental coming off a new shackle. Uh, we mentioned the Lowe's reset. Um, the old rivalry building um, in the Holder Family Fun Center area, that's going to become a pizza ranch. So that's another restaurant coming into the area. Um, of course, we have in Indian Lake, that ribbon cutting happened, I believe, last weekend, Erin, with the Tutus ballet studio, which is adorable, passed by that the other day to welcome them into the city. Such a cute little place. Um, Chase Bank, um, I like how they're going to be reusing the Mimi's. We've been wanting something to go there for quite a while, so that'll be a great use of space there. Um, a couple of new nail salons coming in. Surf Pro, that's another addition off of New Shackle that looks really interesting. They're going to be opening that off of Innovation Way. And then um, we also have the new um, Caliber, the um, auto place that's going to be coming in for collisions. And then um, Sea Salt, you mentioned. And then Suns Fall on New Shackles. So I'm, it's great to see developments that are coming in and people that are coming into the city and utilizing space that's already there um, and kind of filling in some of those gaps, especially on this side of town. Yeah, it is. I mean, anytime we can reuse existing space, I think it's a good thing to, to do infill. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, you know, the activity level is just, um, it's just amazing. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about Chase Bank, they're still going to have a couple thousand square foot feet next to it available in the same building. So hopefully we'll get, you know, a retailer or a restaurant tenant that shares that space with Chase. So if anybody, you know, hears anything out there, there still will be space left over in that, that facility. Yeah. And Dave, your question that just came in, that's going to be Pizza Ranch that's yep. going into the old rubbery place there. So that will be another one. I'm not sure when they're set, but I know they have full permits um, for that one. And of course we talked about the test markets, which is so interesting um, for the city of Hendersonville to be those with McDonald's and Lowe's trying those out. So hopefully more people um, will hear about that, more companies and um, kind of put more interest in the city by the lake and uh, get that going. As far as the horizon, Rod, what is the goals for 2021-2022 with the city? Well, my goal hasn't necessarily changed um, in terms of what I focus on, which is corporate back office, um, those types of relocations or expansions. So I will continue to work on that. Um, we are seeing some of, of the meetings that I have attended in years past um, move back away from Zoom and the in-person meetings. Um, so that's a good thing. You know, when you're attending these site selection conferences and you have 40 other municipalities that are trying to make the same impression, um, very difficult to do that over Zoom, but it just, in person, it just makes it easier to have that face-to-face -to, -face to connect the, the face to the name and, and develop that relationship, which, is vitally important when you're working these projects and working with these site selection consultants. 
So I'm excited that uh, we're going to be able to get back out on the road, um, attend these conferences, work with these folks. Uh, it's just it's just a much better impact when you can do that. Um, there's a lot of things that we all do via Zoom now, and, and it's a great tool and it works well. Um, that's one of those processes that a face-to-face -face is just immeasurable. Got it. All right, we've got some more places that are asking to come in, which are great questions. Um, have you heard any new development on the old Jack in the Box? Last I heard, it was going to be a hot chicken restaurant. Um, a second location from a, a place that's already existing here in Middle Tennessee. Um, I'm not at liberty yet to divulge the name, um, but as far as I know, that has not changed. Got it. That's great. Um, and then, of course, the Black Eyed Pea space. We had heard Martin's Barbecue coming in there. Is that still on the works? Do you know? I think it is. Um, I know Martin's had closed one of their Louisville locations um, because of COVID. And so there's some obviously some shuffling there in terms of their footprint and, and their future plans. But I still think they have ownership of that building and still have plans to do that. Uh, I believe it's just been delayed um, a little bit, and I don't know what that timing looks like right now. And I'm not sure Martin's does. I think that's just still part of what they're trying to decide. Wonderful. Um, how can we as the city and the chamber members help you market the city better? Uh, I think it's just a matter of, of talking, you know, talking to everyone you talk to and, and everyone you know about the assets in, in Hendersonville. I think it's uh, vitally important to stay positive about the city. Um, we're not actively working a project now, but there's been plenty of, of um, times where cities are working projects and a company will send a representative into that city unknown. And that person will visit local businesses, go to the chamber, talk to folks, and basically just do some fishing for what the population and, and the stakeholders in that city think about their community. Um, and that that tells them a lot more than when somebody's leading them around, just telling them all the good things. So just, you know, be positive, talk about the assets. Um, and, and, and I think that's important that everybody do that when they have an opportunity, uh, again, because it shows potential prospects that, you know, people love the city and that, that carries a lot of weight. Absolutely. And we had talked in the past about the Pred um, location coming to the city of Hendersonville. We know now kind of it's going to be right on the border of Hendersonville, Gallatin. How do you and Jimmy um, and James Felton kind of work together, Fenton work together on projects like that? So we've been working that project over a year now. Mayor Clary included, uh, Mayor Brown from Gallatin, my counterpart James, you mentioned. Um, and so as you can imagine with a project that size, there's been multiple iterations of how that's going to look with the hockey facility being on the 20 acres next to STR um, and being in Hendersonville and not in Hendersonville. So anyway, it's been through a lot of iterations and we've been at the table for all of that. Um, I know it's just passed a couple of hurdles in Gallatin in terms of approvals. Um, we feel like as that continues to build out, that 20 acres in the Hendersonville um, property will um, be part of that project. I think our our hope is is that it'll still end up being two to three hundred thousand square feet of class office space, which is what it was originally um, zoned for when Smith Travel bought that, um, and is still zoned for office. So that would be an easy easy process. And I think our hope is still to have that inventory to be able to, to sell to corporations. Um, as we've mentioned before, that's, um, that's a real risky business, um, building a spec office space. So it's tough for developers to kind of swallow that. Um, however, we believe that if it's not office, we're going to have something on that 20 acres that is part of that mixed use. I know that there's a another large scale um, indoor fitness facility that they've been working on for that project as well. Not sure where that currently stands, but um, we're confident that we're gonna be part of that whole mixed use development when it's all said and done. Absolutely, and we're gonna put it in front of it either way. Do yeah. we know when they're gonna start that construction? 
uh, they've still got some approvals, um, uh, but they are closing in on that. And I would say, you know, within the next six months um, that they're going to look at, at uh, turning dirt over there. So. Got it. All right. A couple more questions that have come in. Um, okay. So one thing we do want to kind of go over really fast is we talk about this all the time where there's a lot of mattress stores, there's a lot of Mexican restaurants. How can it, how does the city kind of work with that? A lot of banks, you can't necessarily stop businesses from coming into the city. Um, so can it kind of go over that with people listening? So if, if a business wants to come into the city and it's already zoned properly for that type of business, then essentially the process is that that business has to, um, has to follow all of the city guidelines through planning and zoning in terms of how that building is going to look. But as long as they agree with all the city guidelines and the, and the aesthetics and all of the things that are expected when companies build a new facility, then there's nothing really the city can do to keep them from going into a particular location because it's already zoned for that type of business. So you see a lot in social media about the city should put this there and the city, we really don't have any control over that based on the zoning. Now, if they wanna have a, if they have to rezone for that type of business, that's a different scenario because then the city has the ability to say, you know, we don't feel like that business fits within that, that zoning. We don't feel like that zoning is correct for that particular site. There's some, some other tools that we have to um, encourage the business to maybe look at a different location, um, but that's only in the rezoning process. So the reason that one of the reasons that we see so many businesses going on uh, West Main in the, in the um, older part of town is because that's already commercially zoned. So the company ha doesn't have to jump through any planning or zoning hoops to go into that location. They just have to um, meet the building criteria um, through planning and, and they're, they're able to do that. So uh, that's basically the difference in the two processes. But at the end of the day, if there's not a rezone involved, the city has very little to do other than with design standards on where that business is gonna go. Got it. I'm trying to keep up with these questions, Aaron. You may have to help me on this because they're coming in pretty quick. <laughs> Rod, hold on one second, let me see. Okay, so another question that came in, um, can you explain why we can't necessarily get a Costco's, which we talked about this morning, <laughs> or a Trader Joe's? Um, because we hear that a lot, people are wanting those to come in here. Um, why why aren't those coming to this area um i think there's a couple reasons um and first of all let's not say that they're not coming they're just not here yet um so there's always potential for that to happen um i think there's a couple things you know costco there's we have sam's and essentially they are the same type of company um, with some subtle differences um, so our city's growing and we have great demographics, um, but not necessarily the demographics that can support a Costco and a Sam's within, you know, X miles of each other. Um, so I think there would have to be a site that kind of creates enough distance from Sam where they're sharing the same market, but Costco can also, um, bring in folks from outside of that market to shop at their location. Um, Trader Joe's, we just don't have the demographics for them. We don't have the population. We don't have the median income. We just don't have those types of, of benchmarks that they're looking for in our community to put in a location yet. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. All right. Next one that came in. And Kristen had a great um, comment on here. New businesses often use our free space while recruiting and for new hire orientations prior to opening. We assist job seekers with connecting them with employers, especially in the Hendersonville community. And Kristen, that's so great. I know um, the Chamber has a great um, website also if you're looking for a job to connect people with that job or if um, businesses are looking for employees, um, they can go to that Chamber website also. And that's a great testament to that multi-purpose space you're talking about, you know, more people coming in, that's more people um, living locally, working locally in our community. And it looks like we have got that put on there. Thank you, Aaron, for putting that, that link on there. All right, let me go back to make sure. Um, 
I'm not missing anybody's question. Tracy, are there any new healthcare entities coming besides the new Vanderbilt Clinic? Yes, I have that list here. Um, and I did hear from Kathleen that clinic is set to open, I believe, next Wednesday. Um, that's when they're actually opening the door. So sooner than we thought, which is great. We have Ellis Pain Management coming near the hospital. Um, of course, the Hendersonville Family Dental off a of new shackle. Um, we have Suncrest Health coming off of Tennessee Way. And then we have the Optimist Health coming off of Maple Row. That's on my list for now. I don't have anything other than those, unless Rod, you do. I've been working with a podiatrist that's looking, that's currently in the hospital here in Hendersonville, and she's looking for about 10,000 square feet of space to, you know, expand her practice. Um, so that's in the process. The challenge for her is that she wants to buy, and a lot of those spaces prefer to lease. Um, but hopefully that'll, that is in the pipeline and will be, you know, coming down sooner than later. So she just needs to find the right space. Wonderful. All right. One that came in too is with the Glenbrook Brook announcement, has there been renewed interest in the Steinmart location and world market locations or other big box realtors becoming a thing of the past? Um, I have not received any calls about those spaces uh, at this point. Um, Vastland, who is the developer out there, has um, has announced this project. But like I said, it's been in the works for two years. So I think anybody that's been following that is still probably on a wait mode until that becomes real. Um, and at that point, I, I suspect we'll get more interest in those empty spaces over there. Um, in terms of the big, big box in the future, boy, that's a tough question. Um, they've kind of gone to this hybrid mode um, with COVID like most everybody has and made things more convenient for shoppers in terms of curbside pickup and those types of things. And that may um, allow them to continue to operate as a physical big box location that has a hybrid model. So I can't say that I, I, would, I would project that the big box will go away, but it wouldn't surprise me if they continue to do this more customer service friendly hybrid model that we've seen through the pandemic. Great question. Um, any new businesses geared towards children like childcare coming to the area that you've heard of? Well, we've had several. We've got um, the new one right there on Indian Lake Boulevard, um, which is a beautiful two-story facility. It's very nice. Um, there's one, I think it was on the list I sent you, Kelly. Let me see if I can pull that up. Um, let's see. While you're looking for that, I will tell a couple that you had on this one. Um, the Grind, a physical therapy office is coming in. Fair Food Paradise is a restaurant slash carry out coming to West Maine. Unique Nail and Spa um, is coming to East Maine. Crumble Cookies will be coming to Indian Lake. Already and Big Mac Crafty Boutique will be coming on New Shackle also. So a couple of new places to look forward to. Yeah, and I'll have to get back to you. I know there's two other child care facilities in addition to the one I mentioned. And whoever asked that question, I can send them out that information. Yeah, that was Tracy okay. asking that one. Thank you, Tracy, for those questions. Well, it looks like we've got a lot of things. Let me see. Oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> it just didn't scroll down. Um, what, and this may not be your jurisdiction, but we'll ask the question anyway, just to get it out there. Maybe we can get back to Richard on this. What can be done about Gallatin Pike south of Old Shaco Island to give a facelift? So West Main, that whole area? I believe so. Is that what you're talking about, Richard? Yes. Okay, perfect. So Richard, it's probably no surprise that that's been an ongoing conversation for years and years and years, well before my time. Um, and hopefully that people have noticed that the, the, the new things that are being built on Main Street are uh, more up to current standards with um, Indian Lake and, and those types of buildings. So we're seeing some nice, even if it's an oil change facility, we're seeing some nice buildings 
going up on Main Street. So I think just in the new businesses and them having to um, to work with the planning in, in terms of their design, the, the new places that are going up look great. Um, in terms of the, the trying to reface that, that area, again, there's been many conversations for a number of years. Uh, I know Mayor Clary has a Main Street program plan that he has been working on um, since he came in office. And um, we plan to uh, pull that together and implement that. I don't have an exact start date, but we're looking to pull some tools together that the city can use to um, incentivize uh, some refacing of those buildings. Uh, so hopefully that'll help. We're looking at um, a revolving loan fund um, for that type of process. So trying to collect all the tools that we can actually use um, to make that happen, and then we'll start to roll that out. So hopefully these conversations are turning into some action items in the next six months or so. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people that have been talking about that for a long time. So uh, we really, um, really are hopeful that we can start to make some dents on that and, and get some folks to, um, to rework those buildings. And you'll probably notice as well that, um, and hopefully this is a trend that we'll see continue to happen is finally got the bank torn down, which is great. And then you know, that volunteer village has refaced and done an amazing job on that strip center. And that corner already looks completely different than it did for however many decades. Um, so that was a, that's a huge piece to that. Um, and hopefully that'll continue. Absolutely. And I think that's happening on this side of town, even further down, Brian's Motorsport has gone in and completely redone his area as well. And it looks great out there. Um, and I think that's it. Just people kind of seeing their neighbors do that, taking the initiative. It's great to see new businesses coming in to this side of town. So places aren't just staying empty. Um, right. They're actually being utilized and things like that. And so I think your initiatives that you are putting forth, you and the mayor are great ideas. Um, I'm excited to see those come to fruition and, and actually get some change happening on this side of town. We do have the Ace Harbor that's come in, which is, if you haven't been there, it's a wonderful facility um, and great. And so um, it's exciting to see businesses, Caliber coming in, these different ones coming into this side of the um, city. Yeah, and you, you know, in terms of the, that's a, a very good example for the big box locations. That building was empty for not very long. And, uh, you know, now we've got the, the fitness facility, we've got the Ace Hardware. So that building is now full, it looks good. And so um, reusing these big boxes, it's, uh, it's vitally important and hopefully that will continue. Absolutely, I'm looking at it right now and it looks, besides rain, it looks lovely. <laughs> right out my window. Um, there is one that looks like it's being started and you may not know this one yet. Um, looks like there's construction out there over behind the Senior Citizen Center here in Hendersonville. Do you have any idea what's going there? Mayor, do you know what's going there? I do not. Um, are you talking about the, the, the city property? Um, that, so what, what's really happening there is it's, a, it's some construction from the Hendersonville Utility District. They're just using that as a staging area. Okay. Um, and um, it's something that it made more sense for them to bring in everything uh, when the traffic is down, drop it there. And then as they, as, as they finish up, they leave sort of the, the leftover pipes and uh, we'll move those out at a time that makes more sense instead of clogging up traffic throughout the day. Absolutely. Wonderful. And, that, and that's going to be a huge help to a lot of houses and businesses over there to, to, to have new updated pipes in there instead of 80 year old pipes in the ground. Absolutely. And that just shows more of the city putting love into this side of town. So it's greatly appreciated. Um, I know the residents out here um, are excited for anything new like that. And one other question that came in, this is the last one I'm seeing, and I just, it's a really important one to me also, and it came from Wendy, um, who's one of my favorite people. Wendy said, is there any plans to utilize the property around the lake? And we have talked about this. We are the city by the lake. Um, I know that's a big attraction for our city. What what's the plan there? Well, you can probably answer this as good as anybody with uh, your relationship with the core and and working with that group. Um, let me just mention a couple things that are happening. You know, Sanders Ferry Pizza is moving in to the old um, Barefoot Charlie's. Yep. Oh, yeah, Barefoot Charlie's, um, <laughs> and so they'll be renovating that facility. Actually, already started renovating that facility. And hopefully there will be outside seating on the lake with that facility. 
Um, as Kelly and I have talked about before, the owners of Lincoya would love to do the same thing in the back of their facility, but they're, the owner of that building uh, will not allow any improvements or uh, work done to the outside. So we do have some businesses that want to utilize the lake um, and for various reasons are not able to at this point. So, um, but hopefully Sanders Ferry Pizza, that'll be a great new space um, and give everybody a, another opportunity to spend some time on the water, you know, having a beverage, whatever. Um, in terms of utilizing the rest of the lake, um, you know, I, I've been here four years, so I don't have a long history here, uh, but I have worked with the Corps of Engineers on other things. Um, they're a lot like CSX Railroad in terms of they carry a lot of weight, they have a lot of power, and they like to say no. Um, so it's been, it's a real challenge to um, get anything done on the lake primarily because of the hurdles that the Corps of Engineers puts in front of you. Um, in addition to that, you know, property is expensive, development's expensive. So there are some other market factors, I think, that go into that. But just in terms of the partners that you have to work with to get anything done on the water, quite challenging. Absolutely. And yeah, we have talked about that several times, trying to work with them on a couple of different projects. Um, and hopefully we're going to get some leeway. Um, having them on the call, I think, helps a little bit. So um, hopefully we'll have them out here again soon. Um, I think that the um, Santa Fe people Pizza is going to be a great location there. Um, every time I go to Lincoya, it's busy. Moby Dickies is another one. I mean, every time you go there, that parking lot is full. So I know those restaurants are doing well. Hopefully, we can kind of attract more of those on that area. I know Hook One has um, left that area. Do we know if they own that property? If they're renting that out? Are we looking for someone to go into that space? Uh, I know it's for lease. Um, and I don't know if there's anybody currently looking at that. You know, a lot of times, actually most times in terms of retail and commercial projects, that never touches my desk. Um, so a lot of these things that we talk about, you know, it's gone through planning and gone through codes and, and you know, then I learn about it, you know, at that point. So, um, so I don't know where we are with, with Hook, um, but I do know it is for lease and it's a big facility. So it Absolutely. could certainly... Um, it's got a lot of potential for something really great to go there. Yeah, and it's a great, great location. A lot of restaurants and everything around there. And I know, Mary, you and I had talked about in the past uh, about having some sort of kayaking event in the city of Hendersonville. We, that kind of got sidelined with COVID. Do we look to having that again in the future? So I really love to do that because uh, that sort of become the, the, the that became a, a big activity to do during COVID. Uh, there's nothing wrong with hanging out on the lake by yourself and um, still seeing a lot of folks out there. It's something we're going to continue to push. We have to find a good spot on the calendar to do that when the people who kayak could, could come out and participate. Right, absolutely. So hopefully we can get that in the works again and maybe do that again this fall um, or late in the summer. And um, I think it's important too that Chamber works with you. Every time Rod and I have lunch together, we try to do this uh, every few weeks or so just to touch base. Um, I work a lot with the um, fire marshals and the city planners and with Rod to make sure we know in the chamber um, what, what's coming to the area, what locations are coming, what restaurants, what new retail stores are coming, what doctor's offices are coming, and to make sure that you guys as members have that information also um, to help you make decisions on where you're going to shop, where you're going to eat, um, how you want to stay local and thrive in 37075. Um, Mayor, any new updates that you want to give us? Uh, none that I can talk about that Rod hasn't mentioned already. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, we have a couple projects going on as far as paving roads and as far as flooding projects, but when it comes to economic development, um, I can't really talk about, um, some of the things that we are excited about. Great. Well, I'm excited that you're excited, whether you can tell us about it or not, but your excitement, Rod's excitement on those projects, just give us hope that um, great things are happening in this city. And so thank you for your leadership. Rod, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day um, to be on this call. And um, I think anybody, any other questions, Aaron? Hey, Kelly, can I just say um, some of the information we covered today is on our new uh, monthly newsletter. It's a combination of economic development and planning newsletter. And I'm happy to add any of you to the list for that if you'd like. Um, just uh, send a, a request to my email. It's rkirk at hvilletn.org. 
and I'll be happy to add you to the recipient list for the monthly newsletter. Wonderful. And if you haven't gotten that newsletter, it is amazing. It tells you upcoming projects, what has newly been open. I know um, everybody, I've gotten a lot of messages about Crumble Cookie, um, and it's amazing. So if you haven't been there yet, please stop by, welcome them to the city. Um, but yes, it has great information and projects that are coming up, project spotlights, um, human resource um, information on there, permits that have been pulled for what type of business. So a lot of information on that. And thank you, Rod, for putting that information out there for everyone um, to get. We have your email in the chat now. Um, so if anybody has any other questions, I don't see any. Erin, have you received any? No, I no. haven't. All We're right, good. Rod, so much information. Thank you so much for taking time and, and putting the city's best interests at the forefront. And uh, Kathleen, perfect. Thank you for so much. She is on the call too, incognito, as she goes to doctor's appointments. Um, and I think that's it. Appreciate you guys so much for taking time out of your day on this rainy day for being on the call. And if you have questions about businesses coming to the area or um, new developments, please reach out to the chamber. They have that information for you. And if you know anybody who would love this information, please share the link. It'll be on our social media sites and YouTube. And thank you guys so much. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.